Let's now have a look at role-based access control. So this is where we allow access to a particular endpoint, a particular resource based on who you are, based on what your role is. Okay, and so the first thing that we'll do is we'll actually set it up. Then we'll go and try and hit the endpoint, see our uh, failure, see authorization fail. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll do what it takes in order to fix that. So choose high definition for the best viewing experience. And if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. In our product entity, on the API resource here, what we'll do is we're going to add a new one, uh, something which we've added to the manufacturer already, and it is collection operations. So remember, we have uh, collection operations which you can perform on a collection, or item operations which you can perform on an item. And so, what we're going to do here is thinking about our application. It wouldn't be wise to just let anyone be able to create a product. So what we're going to do is we're going to say you can only actually create a product if you are a admin. So first off, we'll add get and we're not going to put any uh, filtering on there. We're not going to uh, specify that you need to be a particular role in order to get uh, the products. We can just leave that how it is for post operations i.e. in order to create a product we're saying that you must be an admin and so the syntax that we use is this post then uh, an array the key is security that's very important it's essential that you use that key and then it's going to be a function called is granted and there is a naming convention and it starts with the word role all of a case and then underscore and then the role which the user has. So here we are saying role admin and then uh, closing quotes and then closing parentheses. So just make sure that you get the syntax right there. And what we'll do is we're not going to go and add any uh, roles to any users just yet. We'll go straight over to Postman and we'll give this a try. So if you remember what we said about uh, get requests, you don't need to be a, an admin to get these. So this should work okay. Just fire off the request there. Okay, no problem. So here we get some products back. However, for creating a post, we're gonna send off a post request. So just like before, you need all your headers in place, you need your API token, make sure you've got that. And then you need to create a body. So the details you will need are MPN, name, description, issue date, and manufacturer. Make sure you have everything in place first. And then we're just gonna fire off this request. Okay, so the thing to note here is this, status 403 forbidden. Let's just hover over that and see what this says. The request was a legal request, but the server is refusing to respond to it. Unlike a 401 unauthorized response, Auth authenticating will make no difference. Basically, we have authenticated. However, we're not able to do, to hit that endpoint, we're not able to get the data back because we don't have the authorization not the authentication. And so the question is, how do you get authorization? If you're familiar with Symfony, you probably already know the answer to this, but here's how roles works. By default, every user has the role of role user. Let's go over to the user entity and just see what that means. And so when it goes to check uh, the user's roles, which is what happens here, it goes and looks and it uh, calls this method get roles and then it immediately adds role user to the user's role. So every user in the system, when you go to uh, retrieve the user, whenever the get roles method is called, which is what is called behind the scenes, um, when we're using role-based access control, like we are here, then uh, that role is added. So what we need to do is actually give the user the role, um, role admin. So let's go over to table plus, and we'll have a look at our user. And so this is the user in question. If we look at our API token, we're looking at user ID one. So that is the user. And so we need to add the role admin for this user. And so we can simply do that just by making sure that we spell it exactly the same way as what we've done in our Symfony application. So role admin, okay. And then if I save that, and if we go back to table plus, our users should now have the role admin and this should go through and we should be able to create 
that product. Let's see if this works. Okay, so now we have a status of 201 created and then as you can see it's brought back some of the um, the properties that we set here. Everything has worked and we're now able to protect endpoints uh, by specifying that the user should have a certain role. So, things to note here. Mainly the naming convention. When you're using roles it must begin with role underscore and then whatever uh, whatever is the name of the role that you are giving to that particular role. And as you saw, very simple to implement. All you need to do is just say security, and then it is granted, and then whatever role the user must have in order to be able to perform that operation. So that takes care of roles. What we'll look at in the next one is we'll actually look at permissions, and maybe we'll look at things called voters. And so instead of saying... Uh, what role the user has, we can actually get a bit more fine-grained and give different permissions to the user based on maybe what their relationship is to the resources and all kinds of different things like that. Look forward to that one. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.